Hello, hello, hello. Thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate it. So, let's just wait for people to show up and let's start over all over again once everyone joins. Welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Hello, hello, hello. Alright, so I gotta mute this thing, I guess. Alright. So, for today's watch list, we got Meta, Tesla, Apple, Amazon, Spy, as usual, QQQ. Let's see how it all goes today. We will refill this gap at 401. Finally, we gotta keep an eye out for it. All depends on what Tesla does, all depends on what Meta does, all depends on what Google does. But we don't give a shit about Google for now. We're only going to keep an eye out for Meta. We're going to keep an eye out for Apple. We're going to keep an eye out for Tesla. We're going to keep an eye out for Spy. And we'll see if, it, if any of these offers some good tradable opportunities for today. If you're going to trade Spy, watch out for 398. Looks like we're opening flat on Spy with ES testing 4000 did they capture it yet oh they did kind of capture 4000 if they open above 4000 or 4007 it's gonna be interesting <laughs> let's see interesting day ahead and I hope you guys made a lot of money on Tesla yesterday today might be another opportunity for you if you didn't <laughs> So if we go above 8.30, grab some calls, run it all the way to like 8.60. It's a 20 point move, it's a Friday, premiums are cheaper so you don't have to worry about it being so expensive and all. Hey Christian, I got the first like, appreciate it man, thanks for being here. So keep a close watch out for Tesla, Tesla is going to be either a monster or going to crap its pants and fall lower. I mean it can go up or it can go down, right? So let's hope it goes up. So if we go above 8.30 or open candles or close candles above 8.30, well we have a huge day ahead and it can push all the way to 8.60 and with Friday, the premiums being so cheap, you can easily convert $200 to like 5000 or 6000 with Tesla. If you play Tesla, you know how it moves so keep an eye out for Tesla and Meta is another interesting one to keep an eye out for as you can see in the screen watch out for 172 watch out for 170 so someone asked about Oxy let's see what's going on over there OXY Occidental Petroleum hmm looks like they are on the top of the range which is at $62 if they break above the highs of this candle which is at July of 21st which is at 6206 they can run a test to like 6230 mostly and that's about it and if they want to push higher they can push all the way to like 6260 or whatever it is but if you are already long in this mo watch out for 6230 consider scaling out a bit I mean I uh, I won't recommend you holding it over here with your full positions if you have like 10 contracts or whatever it is try securing profits on five at least so that will be a smart move to do that's what i would do so try securing it on five contracts over here and uh, leave two contracts on a test of 50 sma and then cut the entire position when it gets to 63 dollars so if it breaks above 63 we can start all over again that's the plan for Oxy. Good morning, everyone. Google, let's see. Yeah, Google, I'm, okay, so I just posted the notes on Google for the Patreon, so it's pretty simple for Google, if you ask me. 111.50, very, very important number. So if they stay above 111.50, they might run a test to the 50 SMA, which is at 113, and if they go above 113, they can run a test to 115, so, it's the same thing but yeah yesterday move actually completely collapsed the price action so as long as they're under 113 be very careful with your longs if 
look to the downside watch out for 111.50 for support if you break 111.50 110 will act as a psychological support if not we're coming down all the way to 109 or 108 so that's the thing about google so google is one of the weakest stocks over there followed by meta in the big techs so let's see what smh is doing all right so smh is above 230 so as long as it stays above 230 it can come back up to finish this business like they tried to close the gap yesterday they failed almost by 14 cents they failed they had every chance in doing so but they didn't do it for some reason so if spy pushes to 401 there is a high probable chance that we can see smh filling this gap at 230 237 because yesterday they didn't and as long as they're about 230 watch out for 232 37 great i have puts all right so i mean uh, if you have puts on oxy that's a good thing for if it's about google well you made a lot of money so try securing some at the opening bell if we have a huge green candle to the upside pushing the nasdaq to the green yeah don't get caught up on that so we don't want that to happen so but the google will underperform today as we know it will struggle at 113 it will struggle at 115 all over again but if they offer you a candle like this on july 19th be very careful that's not a good look at all tesla is still struggling at 830 area so if you go above 830 you know what to do grab some calls ride it out call it a weekend and go to about go about your work that's it if tesla breaks 830 today it's gonna be insane yeah I, 100 years mate i'm literally talking about it right now <laughs> Yeah, as I was saying, 8.30 is important. So if we break above 8.30, well, it's going to have a monster move to the upside again. So let's see where the moving averages are in Tesla. So that is important. TSLA. All right, so we have the 100-day moving average at 8.27. We're already above it. So we'll come back down to run a test to it most likely and then push all the way to 8.55 or 8.57 up north. If you're, if you're going long over here, make sure to have your stops tight. If you're going long, your stops should be at 8.22, all right? 8.22 should be your stops, regardless of what happens. Get in, 8.22 as your stops. And if, you're, if you can't afford to lose like $7 in Delta, well, your tightest stop will be 8.27, but with the stocks like Tesla, there is a chance that you'll get stopped out pretty quick without even knowing it it can dump like five dollars just like that just to stop you out and then rally to like 15 20 dollars to the upside so if you're trading tesla and if you've never traded tesla before if you trade it already you know it but have a wide risk appetite don't be scared to see premiums moving like crazy because that's what happens if you're trading stocks any stocks which is about 300 or 400 dollar value options premiums will be crazy have a wide risk appetite know how much you will lose if things don't go your way and if it did go your way no way to secure profits so have a plan before entering so you don't get caught up on fomoing or you don't get caught up by holding a bag for too long so that'll be all so the market is opening in another one minute all right so good luck guys let's make some money today let's see for spy we are opening above 4,000 in ES, are we? Better open above 460. 4,000 in ES. Let's see where we are opening at. All right, we are opening above 4,000 in ES. Interesting. So let's see what we got. And here we go. And Tesla coming lower here. Okay, Tesla is getting rejected at the eight thirty level, so let's see.
All right, so I just sold out of my Tesla spreads, meta testing one, one or three. Okay, Apple is looking good here. Apple can run a test to 157, so keep an eye out for it. So, or uh, GS is something to put it on your watch list as well. GS is looking interesting. AMD is looking interesting. Keep Apple on your watch list, as I said, easy. Right, Spy is pushing higher, testing the 400. Be very careful here, Apple is pushing. If you have shorts, if you want to go short, 400 is a good opportunity to scalp to the downside. So let's see how the rest of the play goes. Here we go, 8.30 Tesla, interesting. See if Tesla can go above and beyond here. So, testing an important spot here. Wait for it to close candles above 8:30 before getting in. Don't FOMO in here it's because it's sitting right under an important resistance. Do not FOMO. Do not get whacked. We need it above 8:30. Spy rejection, Apple rejection. Let's see how the rest of the day goes. And here we go, down goes Tesla, nice. And let's be patient, let's see what's going on. So if you guys are not in Tesla yet, it's good. Wait for it. Wait for it to break about 8.30. That'll be a great entry. If you want puts on SPY, you can grab it with the stops at 400. But there is a high probable chance that they are going to fill this gap at 401. So if you're going to go short on SPY here, know where your stops at. Set your stops tight so you don't have to panic for every single dollar move to the upside. So. If you want to go long there, uh, 40150 is your pivot and 400 is a psychological number to keep an eye out for. Meta is holding 792 and bouncing here and uh, something to keep an eye out for. If 172 breaks, watch out for yesterday's lows at 170 to be tested before taking the trade. Come on Tesla, break above 8.30. If it breaks above 8.30, we can trade all trade this all the way to $8.50. There goes Meta. Nice. So uh, if you guys are in the Discord and if you guys took the Meta trade, try securing some profits. It's an easy rocket try, $2 move on from 172. Secure profits. Don't be greedy. 175 is your pivot, as I said. So don't be greedy here. Meta offered a nice jump to the upside. Let me just post it. Secure profits on Meta if you got in at 172. As I said, numbers always works. You, ga you guys can see clearly. As I put it in the morning, 172 was important. They touched 172 and then just took right off. This is why it's very important to focus on the numbers instead of focusing on bias because numbers works, bias doesn't. Interesting candle there on Meta. It's a nice rocket ride. Love it. So let's see how the rest of the day goes. Spy rejected, coming into an important spot here. Tesla said no today. All right, so the Tesla trade is off the table because we didn't go above 8.30. Spy got rejected. If you got in at puts, congrats. 
If you got it at put, this is the right spot for you to scale down for scalping in particular. If you scalped at the height of that candle with the stops at 401, try scaling out because we are coming into an important support here. If you break under it, then watch out for 397 to be tested. So let's see how the rest of the day goes. So if you guys have any questions, you can shoot it. So if you guys uh, have closed any of your positions, let me know. Did you make any money today? Let me know. We have an interesting day ahead of us. The spy is sitting right at support here. So let's see how the rest of the day goes. So I'm just going to set an alert for Tesla at 8.30, alright? So if it breaks above 8.30, well, we can take a trade. We can even think about taking a trade over there. Until then, nope, not touching it. Here we go. So as I said, follow the numbers. We can see the bounce exactly from 397.97. You can see how it works. It always works like this numbers work most of the time and that 80 percent of the time where it works can make you big money market can do what it wants at the end of the day but instead of following call outs blindly just note down the numbers on your own so take a notepad just write down the numbers and if you don't even if you even if you don't know technical analysis when you see a stock hitting a particular number you can just buy calls and then go long over there and if it drops below that particular number you can just cut the losses you don't need a call out service and you don't have to pay someone to do it so here we go tesla gunning again watch out for 8 30 boys above 8 30 we are flying in tesla until it's above 8 30 stay calm no need to be aggressive thoughts on Apple all right so as I said as long as Apple is staying about 154.63 probability of Apple running a test to 157 is higher so if you are going long on Apple watch out or keep your stops at 154.63 and meta if you guys are still in it congrats here they gave a rocket ride three dollars to the upside good trade amazing so spy is pushing higher and meta is pushing higher interesting day spy is positive now yep. meta is pushing higher that's what i said if you got in at 172 as i mentioned in the today morning notes in the discord that's uh and especially if you got in for one day expiry options i mean the options which expired today you would have easily captured like two to three dollars delta which is like 172 to 175 as the highs that's a three dollar move that's like we're talking about 180 to 200 dollars here uh, there goes tesla all right so you guys ready and here we go tesla is flying out here Tesla is looking beautiful in here, so let's see if they can hold on and break above 831 to the upside. We are pushing up, finally. Nice. Got aggressive on Tesla and got burned. Uh, what do you mean you got burned? Like, uh, as I said, like wait for 830, right? Like, it's above 830 now. You can take the risk here, but the stop's at $830, so we can push all the way to 850 here on Tesla, so... Uh, let's see good morning Mario nice to have you back yeah good to have you back Angela thanks for joining the stream appreciate it so as I said don't FOMO in on Tesla our pivot for entry is 830 so we got that 830 just now and you can enter 
after the 8.30 candle closes. No need to rush in. There's no point in FOMOing in and hoping for Tesla to break a particular level. Once it breaks, then we can enter and it's all good. So I might close my AMD calls here, the ones which I got for next week. I don't want to expose myself to a lot of risk. So I am cutting a few long positions over here as by nearing the 400 area. So if you're playing Tesla, don't don't buy like 880 calls or like 890 calls which expired today so if you have enough funds go for next week if possible and set your stops tight as always because spy is nearing an important level qqq is nearing an important level so don't get burnt it's easy to get burnt gs is looking interesting here as well for a running a test to like 300 dollars so let's see uh, looks like spy wants to push higher but it needs some backing up from all the big techs. Meta needs to cooperate at around 175. Tesla needs to push to 850. Apple needs to gun for 157. All these needs to happen in tandem for SPY to break above. So let's see if SPY has the juice to fill that gap today. And I'm closing my GS calls as well, the one which I got yesterday. It's a pretty decent trade. Secure profits when you see it, because when SPY is nearing resistance, we've got to be aware of certain things and we don't want to get trapped, we don't want to get caught. Tesla and we, we're just gonna put spy aside here on this side of the chart and we're gonna keep Tesla as our main focus because I can see a lot of people are already jumping into Tesla so we need the numbers right so trading view for some reason fuck things up so here we go nice push if you got in at 830 that's a six dollar move and if you got a zero day expiry options in the money by spending like 300 400 dollars that will be worth like 1k or 2k right now so Consider securing profits as the day goes, especially with a zero day expiry because theta works real time. Every five minutes you'll be losing money. If Tesla goes to 840 and comes back to 8, 836, uh, you'll, be losing some, you'll be losing a lot of money. So we don't want that to happen. So every bounce you see, secure profits, get back in again. So that's what we do. If you got in next week, yeah, you're chilling. Just chill out. Like you can just hold on to it. You can just ride the wave out. No worries at all. And the interesting part about this was, uh, I think like before a week before earnings, we had a massive trade on Tesla uh, from uh, V in the sense not V. Uh, I saw it on the trading view which uh, which crossed the order flow. They had the spread eight eighty eight nine ten spread. So Tesla, which expires on August, right? So in order for this spread to make money, Tesla got to go to nine hundred and ten dollars and above before august first week so that was the spread which they took they spent like around 330 dollars if tesla hit that number they will be making 2700 dollars per contract and he got a million of he got like 3000 of them imagine that guy right now he'll be balling he's almost in the money at this moment right spy pushing higher apple is just consolidating here interesting so if you guys are into zero dated expiration options, well, I mean, we need the move quick and fast in order for you to make any money. So always remember that. So if you're going for a zero dated expiration option, so keep a close eye on it. Don't, if we consolidate for a while, like what Apple is doing at this moment right now, probability of making money will be very less. So 
careful with that. Let's buy, said, fuck you to 400. Interesting. It's a regular re rejection. So let's see if they can knock on the doors of 400 and push higher here. What's uh, SPX? I think SPX is testing 4000 at this moment. So let's see. So as I said, if you guys got in a Tesla after 830, consider securing profits don't hold on to it uh, for much longer expecting for much higher bounces it will happen but if it's a zero date expiration options which expire by today at three o'clock consider securing some as you see the money and you can get back in again that's all i mean like you can always get back in again and you can always make money over and over again so don't get greedy don't get slapped so now the initial morning volatility is out of the way. If you guys wanted to short spy, if there's a lot of bears out there, a lot of bears. Like, looks like they hate money nowadays. Like, every one of if you see a perma bull suddenly becoming a bear, that tells you that the bottom is actually in. <laughs> I'm not saying it's actually in, but it's a it's a sign of an indication that yeah, we might be close to a bottom. <laughs> so just play the trend. Don't average down on a losing position don't be betting against the trend i mean even though the primary trend is still to the upside there's no way for us to know that when this shit will start going down again there is n absolutely no way anyone who says otherwise is lying to you no one knows what's going to happen like that's the reason why whenever i see people calling the top or calling the bottom i automatically assume that they are in they are idiots it's all about the probability for now the probability is spy running a test to like 400 if they break above 400 they can fill this gap and then let's see what will happen so to be honest i don't know what will happen if they break above 400 break above 400 they're about 830 mate so tesla is about 830 did they open about 100 sma yes they opened about 100 sma as well so for now the probability is tesla runs a test so to 854 or 855 that's the higher probable case for now i mean if q's tank like one percent or something then that's a different story but apple is looking strong meta is not meta is basing out so these are something to keep an eye out for how about tesla call on 0729 expiry what strike are you choosing what's your stop set so if I mean uh, if you want to go heavy, uh, please set your stops at the 100 SMA, which is sitting at 827. Can you afford to lose seven dollars in delta with that option? That's the main question. So if that's the case, go on, do it. So set your stops tight. If it didn't work out, it didn't work out. You can always pivot out early. So but if it did work out, there's a huge risk to reward over here for you. I want Tesla to test 850 today and that is pretty much possible pretty much in cards let's take a look at the weekly charts if we close the week today above 825 that's a big win for bulls not gonna lie if we close the week above 825 it's gonna be insane for Tesla so let's see because the weekly 20 SMA is currently sitting right at 825. If we close the week under 825, whatever rally we had will be shorted back down to earth and Tesla might go all the way down to run a test to like 800. But as long as we're above it, yeah, we're good to go. The probability of testing 860 first, 857 is higher and then 880 comes next go about it like as long as you have your stops on place so i don't see why not the trend is in your friend the momentum trend is in your side the momentum is in your f momentum is in your favor go on do it no worries because if you go i don't know if you guys remember the last run which we had on tesla uh, from 500 dollars to like 1200 that happened after earnings so tesla can be an absolute monster when it starts to run so be on the right side of it don't try calling the tops don't try calling the tops and short it and then like take a huge pie in the face wait for the reversals and that should work you can go ahead and do it how do you know which expiration date to use when using options 
To be honest, no one does. <laughs> no one knows which expiration to use because that's uh, you know the price, right? You can predict the price. You can know when it like you can know like if this level holds, the next level is this. You can know that, but there is absolutely no way of predicting at what time exactly it will hit that particular price point. There is absolutely no way of knowing that. So that's why I always say if you want to get options, always go for a longer dated expiration ones so that you always have time even though you're wrong you always have some time for things to be playing out in your favor i mean if you're not day trading that's totally fine if you're not day trading then like you can just buy weekly options because anyway you'll be going in and out you'll be getting in and you'll be out in like 20 25 minutes so that's totally that's totally fine but if you're swinging in particular always key, get a longer dated expiration options because you, sometimes you can be right in the price but very very wrong with the time so Tesla at 841 we are pushing if you got in at 830 after good luck is struggling big time near that 400 area but they wants to push higher bear, bear they don't want to give anything to bears interesting let's see right so what what other stocks are you guys watching for today is there anything in your watch list let me know we can go over those it looks like market chilled out a bit and meta look at that isn't that interesting when I say numbers work, <laughs> this is what I mean. You see where the rejection happened? These, these lines were in here the, from the point the stream started. You can see the exact place where the rejection happens. As I said, there are no accidents, there are no coincidences. Know the numbers, you can always get and you don't have you don't even have to know technical analysis. Like you don't even have to know like perfect technical analysis to trade all these. Once you see the numbers, note it down, and once you note it down, just trade the numbers alone. That alone will make you money big time. And for now, Tesla is pulling a shit on us. So, let's see. If you are bull on Tesla, weekly close above 8.23 is important, very important, which is today's closing candle. Oh, what's going on here? Spy, nasty rejection. Tesla, nasty rejection. They touched 400, pull back immediately to the downside. So, it still didn't fill the gap though. So, let's see. Interesting, interesting. Today is a trend day, we will just hold on to the 50 SMA. Next support for NVIDIA. Let's take a look at NVIDIA in just a minute. So. Oh, all right, so we are actually sitting right at support, but we gotta see if we hold on to it or not so that's the important thing so 175 is important for Nvidia if you're trading it keep an eye out for it so if you break under one like if you want to take the trade to the upside you can set your stops at 174.64 and if you break that you can always pivot out for a small loss so let's see the daily charts all right so where does this come from 174 Yes, 170, 176 is important number. If you break under 176, uh, we can run a test to yesterday's lows at 175.46. Is that the lows of yesterday? 175.45. If you break under it, easily come down to 173. So if you are going long on NVIDIA, uh, if you want to go long on NVIDIA, you can take chances at 173 or you can take chances at 170 uh, if you haven't go, go, went long before. So 
keep an eye out for these numbers 173 or 170 i like it more at 170 for a trade because that's the av VAP from the lows as well so watch out for one, 170 the 169.30 and 169.40 in particular so that also coincides with the 50 day moving average as well Starbucks. What's going on with Starbucks? Let's relax. Oh, looking pretty nice here. I mean, I would love for I would love to take a trade on this if we come back to run a test to eighty one dollars. <laughs> eighty one dollars will be good, or the best case scenario will be seventy nine to seventy eight dollars will be really good. Oh, there goes Spy. Nice, nice red candle, nice rejection of four hundred. So uh, if you guys want to trade uh, Starbucks, if you want to go long, I mean, uh, this is a time to actually secure profits, not to establish new positions because SPY is entering uh, really, really important levels here. This is where you actually secure profits on the longs which you wrote until now because we are due for a pullback. Be mindful of it. So if you want to go long on Starbucks, watch out for 81.37. 79 i mean 8137 and uh, let's say 80 dollars give or take the round number the zone 8140 to 7915 is the zone which is important so if we get a back test to those numbers then you can go long over there you can take the risk over there for now meta is just consolidating between 7 172 and 175 we've got to see if it's going to make a move higher or a move lower So I can see everyone in here was bitching about Tesla is unbelievably overbought. Yeah, it looks like they got puts on Tesla. And also I want to talk about one thing, like just because, I mean, if you're, if this is for anyone who are especially new to the game, all right? So just because the stock went up by a lot doesn't mean it has to come down the next day. So don't buy put just because you saw stock going up like 10% or 20% the day before. It can come down, but that's not a strategy and it won't make money in the long run. So if, for example, you can take Costco, right? Uh, it went up like 10% one day. Uh, you can take a look at this chart on Costco. Uh, we, we are just chilling out here, so no need to rush. The volatility is settled down, so we will just float around for a while. All right, so look at this move in Costco. This is a daily chart which we are looking at, right? So just we had this massive rally, right? Just because we had this one day rally from like f uh, 460 to 480 and you are like, all right, no, I mean, it went to like $20 more. It should come down, right? Wrong. Just because we went up $20 doesn't mean you have to get puts all of, t all of a sudden. It doesn't work all the time. And if you, if you got puts here, you must have missed out on a nice another 20 point move to the upside and your puts would have expired worthless. So always follow the numbers, that is very important. Know the levels which you're going short on, know the levels which you're going long on. The uh, people, most of the people over here use the RSI in a very, very wrong way. Just because an RSI is overbought doesn't mean you have to buy puts and just because an RSI is oversold doesn't mean you have to buy calls. Simple as that. Opinions and beliefs do not matter in trading, only price action. Thank you, exactly just because the stock went up like 10 percent on the same day doesn't mean it has to come down again another five percent or six percent the next day well it can happen but it doesn't mean it will happen so if especially if the stock is above a critical level look at this if you buy puts over here from 480 to like 4500 and then you got you got puts because it went up like 20 dollars the same day next day this went up another 15 dollars so yeah focus on the numbers it pays you real good the Costco is still going higher. It never came back down. Even if it did, if you got puts here and it came back down over here for like $10 and those puts are still worthless. That's what YouTubers say since it went up. Yeah, that's what idiots say. I mean, I, I, I know a lot of good YouTubers, but that's what idiots say. Just because it went up, it should come down. N nah, it's, it's, it's not gravity, mate. Like, I mean, yeah, it should come down, but if you're playing with, if you're playing with options, 
it has to come down by your expiration date so i always say just follow the trend don't bet against the trend uh, stick to the trend and it it helps you in a big way it helps you in a very very big way if you just stick to the trend and then focus on making money on it instead of well chasing something else all right it looks like tesla broke 830 here well that's not a good look Oh yeah, if you guys don't know, I still have a VXX calls, which I got yesterday. So if you guys want to hop in, uh, that's just a hedge. I got the 21.50 20 calls expiring next week. Uh, just in case uh, a VXX, a guide for a VXX uh, tracks the volatility, the VIX, right? Uh, I just made a bet saying that the volatility will expand leading into next week because we were nearing 400 in SPY which is uh, important and a critical support to keep an eye out for and uh, yeah I got the VXX calls and tech SPY is next week it's just a hedge to the overall folio to protect my gains think of it like that and uh, yeah it's a 21.5 calls uh, I spent like $33 on it and it's expired ne it expires next week so that's all i have for now the vxx calls is the only position i hold and uh, let's see what tesla does let's bring tesla back on the spotlight All right, Tesla is still holding on to the 100 SMA here. That's that's good. That's a good relief for now, at least. I mean, if they break under it now, that's a different story. As I said before, Tesla needs to close the week above what the price point again, eight twenty-five dollars. If they can't close the week above eight twenty-five, yeah, it's done over. No point. I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't push higher next week, but if you went long as i said before don't hold on to it for much longer uh, with the zero date expiration try securing profits because the spy and qqq are getting rejected we gotta see if spy takes on and takes off above so let's see 825 is your pivot for tesla so vxx is nothing but the etf which tracks the wix so uh, you're just betting that the volatility will go higher. That's what we're doing by buying calls on VXX. Tesla back, yeah. I mean, it, it never gave up the 100 SMA, so we're good. Oh, you see this You see this orange line here? That's the 100 SMA for Tesla, which is currently sitting at 827. So as long as we don't pummel below it, so we should be good regardless. So let's see. But the, as I said, but the broader market needs to cooperate. Tesla can't keep going higher when the broader market is like getting fucked. So we can't expect Tesla to do that. So let's see. I mean, yesterday they had a reason to do so, but we got to see. About 8.30 still open stores for 8, 8.50 to 8.60 to the upside. So this is just a bear market rally. Don't get caught up. Know your risk. So yesterday I made a terrible mistake in my small account. <laughs> I was having a spread in semiconductors, SMH, right? So I took a trade on SMH and uh, it went to uh, i was playing the gap fill this was the trade which i was taking let me show you guys so, so uh, i got in at 129 all right so i wanted i want to play this gap fill 
So the gap fill was completed. So when it went over there, I converted it into spreads. And then I saw Snap was reporting earnings and stuff. And then I closed it. Uh, with spreads, it's actually two contracts, right? You will be buying one contract and you'll be selling one contract. I did that shit. And then they flagged me for pattern day trading. Because apparently, if you sell spreads, they will count two contracts instead of one. So, yeah, now I got to either call Robin Hood and ask him to remove the 90-day restrictions or I can't day trade for 90 days. How fun. Ah, uh, if I noticed before, someone asked me about MasterCard. I'm sorry if I missed you. I'm just going through the ch chats. Let me see. Let me take a look. Oh, all right. So by the looks of it, by the looks of it, if we can't recapture 348 by close, we can come down to run a test to 344 to three, 342 zone. That's what I'm be looking at. 342 to 340 zone. It's easy for MasterCard to come to run a test to those levels. So, but you don't have to take the trade here for today. Wait and watch for the close and see if they can recapture 348 to the upside. If they close about 348 today, you can go long for the next number at 357. So if you want to go short, your risk to reward is very minimal over here. And if you want to go short, your stop should be at 348. You're risking $3 to make $3. It's a 50-50 risk to reward. It can go either way. So it's totally up to you. Yeah, we don't like it here because we well, the meta, we already got the trade. With meta, we already took the trade. The second time, if we test it for the second time, nah, it doesn't work like that. The first time we tested it, gave a bounce to 175, our trade is done. So we got out at 175, that is over. And we don't like the second retest or third retest. There's a saying in Wall Street, right? You buy it on the first test, you sell it on the second one. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Because like uh, when we bought it on the first one, SPY was gunning for 400. And the second time, the SPY is rejected from 400 and it's drilling lower. So the probability of it bouncing back, it's still there, but not as high as the first bounce which we got before. So don't go in again. When should we go short? Uh, I, I said in the morning, uh, before market open and after market open, the first five minutes of the session, right? If you want to go short, your stops should be at 40150. So uh, it will, I said it when I, and SPY was trading at around like 399. So if you want to go short, your stops should be at around 401. That's the gap fill. So if you are a bull, you should be out on all your calls. You should be out by all your calls on yesterday, before yesterday's close. And you should be holding only one or two of your winners. And if you got only like 10 contracts with SPY calls, you should have sold out with about eight of them or even nine of them. You should, have be you should be leaving at least one for that gap fill to happen. And just in case if that gap has been filled and pushed higher. If you want to go short, well, as I said before, your stops should be at 40150. So don't go for a single day expiration. Don't go for about two day expiration. Two day expiration or absolute gamble because you never know what's going to happen. For now, SPY is still holding on to 397. That's a good thing. And as long as it's about 397, if you didn't go short at 399, don't go short over here. 397 is important. If they break about 39, if we break below 397, then we can take the trade to 395. But for now, hold on to it. Hold on to the shorts until we break under 397.36. KO. It's been a long time since I took a look at this stock, not gonna lie. Oof, it's not a good looking chart at all. What the hell? Oh, it looks like $60 is inevitable in this. I mean, uh, they, uh, as I said yesterday, I don't know if I said it in uh, Saints Discord or Canons, if you guys are in here. But look at the sectors which are leading today. XLU is leading, XLP is leading, which means utilities and consumer staples. So. Today, uh, watch out for 6176. If they fail here, $60 will be a good entry for calls for swinging to the upside. Until then, it's kind of like in a no man's land, if you ask me. You can either go above and run a test to $62, or you can either go down to run a test to $60. Whenever a stock is at this particular point, 
there is no point in taking any trades because if you buy calls and it goes down to test the sixty dollars, you already lost a dollar sixty in delta. And if it, if you buy puts and it goes about to run a test to sixty two, well, you already lost a uh, well a dollar sixty again in puts. So it's not worth it when you're uncertain about the moves and when the stock is trading in the no man's land right in between there is like no point in going longer it's no point in going short just stay out i was originally looking at 60 puts for october but it might work out it might work out not gonna lie it might work out with support at 60 dollars to the underneath so if you want to take the risk, uh, I would say just set your stops at sixty-two dollars. I guess like technically you're risking like forty cents to make one dollars, so that's a pretty decent risk to reward. But watch out for sixty though. That's important support levels to the downside, and uh, we are still holding on to that range of the bottom which we had on July fourteenth, which is at sixty-one thirty-seven. So yeah, that that's it. Those are our numbers. So if you want to go short. Your support is at sixty dollars and seventeen cents, or let's just run it up to sixty. And uh, if you want to go long, uh, your s profit taking is at sixty two twenty one. VIX is up twenty percent for me, Mario. Trader's choice to take profits. Do you suggest how to play this? All right, uh, about VIX. So it it's better for you to secure profits when you see it. All right don't be greedy and don't keep holding on to it and expecting a big thing to happen until spy breaks under 390 all right i mean by the time spy breaks under 390 wicks will already be up this is just a hedge all right the purpose of us getting the wicks calls here is simple we don't know what will happen at 400 if we get a nasty rejection from 400 volatility will expand and we are making money out of it that's all we're doing we are opening some hedges along the way as the spy keeps pushing higher and higher and higher because if we have a one day pullback for like two percent or three percent and if you have a ten percent day on vix you secure profits that's the old plan because when spy dumps one percent or something you, you you don't have to be in a position of like you know with your pants down so that's the worst position you can be in so always set up some hedges along the way especially when spy is pushing near an important spot so that's all we are doing so it depends on how much money you put in as well so if it's up 20 percent for you it's i mean as i said it's traded choice you can always secure profits along the way but this is a hedge just in case if you pummel down you need something to hold your portfolio up so that's the reason for this wix so I'm holding mine till next week. I mean, I spent like thirty dollars. I don't mind losing the thirty dollars, but if it goes lower, that's a good risk to reward. It, like you can easily convert this thirty dollars to like one fifty to two hundred or three hundred dollars if you have like a massive down day on Monday. So let me take a screenshot. I wanna. I want to tell talk to you guys about something. So these are the sectors which are in S and P 500. All right, Excel. I mean, if you can put, if you are trading with Robinhood, put all these sectors. Open a separate tab. Put all these sectors under your watch list. Uh, let me go over one by one. XLK tracks all the technology technology stocks, which is an S and P 500. All right, XLU is utilities. XLP is consumer staples. XLB is materials, XBI biotech, XLF financials, XLE energy, XLI industrials, and XLV healthcare, right? So uh, by looking at this, you can actually see which sectors are lagging in S&P 500 and which sectors are leading in S&P 500. You can clearly see financials are lagging, biotech is lagging, and technology is lagging. So which tells you the sentiment is risk off. You, the risk off in the sense people are flocking their money into defensive plays because when SPY is nearing an important spot, they don't want to be caught in the high risk names like uh, Square or ARK or stuff like that, right? So they want to be in a safe place which doesn't drop like 20% in the same fucking day. So what they do is they put their money into dividend plays like XLU or XLP. That's the reason why if you check today's price action, you can clearly see 
stocks like Costco, stocks like HD, they'll be stocks like KO, they're all doing well because these are safe dividend plays. So if you guys are interested, like always keep an eye out for the sectors when the market is market is ongoing. So it'll actually let you know where the money is flowing into for that particular day. For XLU and XLP is leading, the sentiment is risk off. When the technology, financials, biotech are leading, the set sentiment is risk on. So make sure to add all these sectors to your Robinhood or Webull or whatever it is in your watch list section so you can just have a glance over it. So as I said before, SPY bounced exactly from the same spot at 397.50. So interesting stuff. What's our Gessler doing? Ah, looking good here. Nice. So what Tesla calls or puts are you guys playing today? Tesla is just like, what's the ATR on Tesla? ATR on Tesla is 42. We open the day at 841 and if the one ATR move plays out, we can push to 850 or all the way to like 880 bucks on Tesla today. But after a huge move yesterday, I wouldn't be surprised if they just consolidate and do nothing, to be honest. So uh, let's see. If we get these types of moves on Tesla, now that is mad, madness. So if that happens, well, it's going to be a beautiful trade to the upside. But the broader markets needs to cooperate, so let's see. So Tesla is testing the highs which it had in the market before open, so which is at uh, 840 so uh, let's see let's see how it goes for the rest of the day so if you guys have any questions you can let me know and don't forget to leave a like don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you guys or if you guys found the stream informative i would really really appreciate it uh, if you guys want to join the discord link is down below in the description if you guys want to join the patreon to support the channel link is down below in the description as well Thank you for joining. So SPY doesn't want to give up 397. So that's the bad news for bears for now. But we're just consolidating. So they will either make a big push to the upside to the close. And then we will see the up Friday, up Monday. It's called as a Monday effect. It's a theory actually. If the Friday is up, the Monday there's a higher person probability that the Monday will also be up. Doesn't happen all the time, but just the statistics. If we close above 40150 today, that's a great thing for bulls. That's something to keep an eye out for. So let's see what we have on tape. So Tesla is gunning for 840 again. So if we give if we get to 855 in Tesla today, try securing some profits and then if we go above 855 again on Monday we can always like get back in so we can just play it like that so I got into 840 call oh you're already almost in the money that's good uh, I actually closed my uh, spread yesterday I got into 835 calls yesterday uh, at the market open I spent like what 65 bucks or something on it and uh, I converted it into spreads when it hit like 500 bucks and I just closed it today morning as soon as the market opened and we got that initial pop to like 8.30. So I was like, yeah, I'm out. I'm not holding it anymore.
no wonder the premiums in Tesla are expensive because look at this volatility. We have been moving like $3 or $2 in a matter of minutes. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Thank you, Mario, for your content. Love your Discord, bro. Hey, thanks for joining, mate. Appreciate it. And thank you for the support as well. It looks like SPY just got rejected at the closing print of the first candle. So let's see how the rest of the day goes, boys. Uh, it's interesting for sure. Tesla is still consolidating today. So let's see. As I said before, all we need as bulls in Tesla is for Tesla to close above a 25. That's all we need. If that happens, it's a huge win for bulls and Tesla can easily push higher to like 855 to 860 in upcoming weeks. And here we go, 840 again. So if Tesla goes to 855 today, it's going to make a lot of people rich, huh? Looks like a lot of people in our Saints Discord and a lot of people in my Discord is longing Tesla. So let's hope for that. Let's hope everyone closes their trading week on a happy note. Even if it didn't happen today, let's hope it happens on Monday. So about Meta, we still bounced exactly from 172 to the penny and uh, we got rejected again at 172.92 again to the penny. So let's see how the rest of the day goes because we don't want to take it for the second time because you can see the velocity of the first bounce, right? We had a $3 bounce and you can see the velocity of the second bounce. This is, meh, you got like what, $1 bounce? And here it offered $3. So that's why I'd said like, it's not worth it to tr take the same trade on the second bounce because you won't see the same intensity. I mean, it's not worth it at the end of the day. So. When you got in, you, you make use of the initial volatility and you get out and close the day and call it a day. The main job of trading is not to make money, but is to protect the money which you already made. Protecting the capital comes first. I did a spread on Tesla. I bought 830 and sold 835. What are your thoughts? Uh, what's your expiration? Uh, if you can tell me your expiration, uh, that'll be really great because uh, it all depends on the expiration, to be honest. 830, 835 is a bit aggressive. I think you must be, uh, you must have paid $250 or something to enter with a $250 profit, right? I think that's how, uh, that's the RNR. It should be 50-50 most likely because you got in right in the money and you should be up, up pretty much right now. So I would suggest uh, s try securing profits when Tesla hits uh, 850. T5 most likely when it guns to 850 if you see it like hit like around 60% or something try securing profits don't wait for that another 40% to hit and then miss out on the 60% gains whatever you took uh, that especially with spreads you can always enter back again that's the thing about spreads right if you made 60% consider securing profits and open a new one so you don't have to wait for that 40% and then miss out on the 60% gains which you already made So let's see if Tesla, it's like 15 more dollars to the upside on Tesla. We're still getting rejected at the highs of 840. What's going on at 840? Is there anything over there at 840? 
Nothing is over there at 840. Why is it getting rejected over there over and over? Yeah, I think the spy is the culprit here. S spy is getting pummeled down, pushing Tesla down along with it. That's the problem. They're slowly melting a tire. So let's see how the rest of the day plays out for Tesla. And uh, we can just hold on to it. We had a 10% day yesterday and we had like what? 2% day today. The follow through is insane. July 29th. Yes, uh, as I said before, if you see 60% or something in your in your spreads, consider securing profits. You can always re-enter again. Uh, re-enter again with the different strikes or you can always roll it higher. For a much cheaper price so don't wait for that 40 percent and miss out on 60 percent of your profits which you already made take it from experience so <laughs> uh there are days where like when i started doing spreads i'll be waiting for that 100 percent to hit every single time but every single time i waited for that 100 percent to hit i always got slapped so don't lose your profits for whatever 60 or 70 percent you made for another 30 percent for, for chump change like if you made like 100 and 120 dollars out of the 250 dollar maximum profits I would say secure that and then open a new spread with the different legs on. Right, so let's wrap this thing up. So before I leave, uh, watch out for 297 in SPY. Don't go short until 297 is broken to the downside. If you break 297, well, you can go short until 290, oh, sorry, 397. You can go short until 395 is taken to the woodshed. If you break below 395, then you, you know the numbers. Watch out, now go to my tab and check the numbers. I think the next stop will be at around 292.50 to 291.66. Sorry, 392.60 and 391.66. That'll be the next stop. If that goes away, 390 is next. So play the, play the trend, don't get greedy. And as always, take high probability trades, manage the risk wisely. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next stream, I guess. So join the Discord, join the Patreon, subscribe to the channel and all that thing. So I hope it was helpful. I'll try to do it more often. And I say that all the time, but uh, I get busy with my work. But I'll try to do it at least three times a week. So <laughs> let's see. All right. This is my very first spread I attempted. Yes, like give it a try. That's a good that's a good thing. So you're trying out new things, but always make sure to secure profits at sixty or seventy percent when it hits. So don't be greedy. So let me see. It will be smart to sell snap calls. Uh I don't even know why you got snap calls right now because I mean as I said the same thing applies. Just because the stock went down a lot doesn't mean it has to go up the next day. So for snap the best place to buy calls for snap i would say like if you see eight dollars in snap that's a very good place to buy calls on snap i mean ten dollars might offer some psychological support but until you see uh eight dollars i would say wait wait on those calls so today's high let's see what's the bottom of today's uh today's low at uh, today's low yeah they made a new low actually and yesterday's gap down low is actually sitting at ten dollars and fifty one cents and we are actually under it so yeah eight dollars will be a nice place for you to get the calls so until then i would just say hold on to hold off on it so that'll be great all right all right boys thank you so much for joining i'll see you guys in the next stream yeah take care bye bye